Hi, I'm Miss Smith and I'm one of the history teachers here at United College Sixth Form. So the question we all want to know the answer then is why study history at Swindon Academy? So history is highly respected by all universities for a variety of courses. So it's classed as a facilitating subject by Russell Group Universities. The qualification itself can prove extremely interesting, hence explain its popularity across the country as an A-level subject. So history is a great A-level for progression to social science and humanities courses at university. For example, history, English, law, and even economics. So many leading universities also respect science students taking history as analytical and writing skills gained from it are invaluable in any field. So the depth, variety, and challenge in nature means that the skills you learn from a history A-level will, will remain with you no matter what you choose to study at a higher level. In A-level history, you have three different components that need to be studied. The first component is the breadth study of the Tudors, 1285 to 1603. First of all, you start off with Henry VII, and you look at his consolidation of power, which then leads into Henry VIII. You then move on to the mid-Tudor crisis, where you look at the changes in religion from Edward VI. You then move on to Mary I. You then look at the Elizabethan era, which goes into the golden age of the Elizabethan era. And you also touch upon Mary, Queen of Scots. OK, so it's a lot more detailed than what you would do in GCSE. And some of these topics you wouldn't have covered for more than one lesson in year eight. So it's a really, really exciting topic to get stuck into. So component number two is our depth study. So it's Germany 1918 to 1945. So you will have touched upon a few of these areas before, but we go into a lot more detail. OK, so we have going to cover the establishment of the Weimar Republic, the golden age in the Weimar Republic, the collapse of democracy, the establishment of a Nazi dictatorship and how Hitler takes control, the racial state and something. So there's a new module here that you would have never touched before is the impact of war. So 1939 to 1945. So we have a look at the impact of World War Two on Germany. OK, this exam, this part of the exam will be worth 40% of your final grade. The final component for history is a historical investigation, which is a piece of coursework. This will be an average of 4,000 to 4,500 words and is 20% of your final grade. OK, so we have had some brilliant questions in the past because you get to pick your own question of what you would like to find out more about. It's a personal study based on a topic of your choice. OK, because this could take the form of a question, the contents of approximately 100 years. OK, so we've got some examples of what we've previously studied. So how far was Martin Luther King, the most significant civil rights leader in the development of black civil rights in America in the years 1865 to 1968? OK, and previously we've also had to what extent was Stalin the most effective leader in maintaining control over Russia and the USSR in the period 1894 to 1991? So it is your choice. You can pick whatever you'd like to study within reason, OK, as long as you have an interest in it. So one of the most important questions you need to ask yourself then is what will history do for you? So as a history student, you'll never experience the events that you study. Instead, you have to build up a picture from the evidence that's been left. You have to become skilled at asking questions, sometimes awkward questions. You've learned not to take everything at face value. You have to develop an empathy and understanding of the actions and achievements of others. You have to be prepared to put your case and argue it well. You have to use evidence to draw conclusions and make judgments. These skills are highly desirable in many different careers. Careers in history. So history can take you to many different places. It's not just, oh, you have to be a librarian. You have to work in the National Archives. You have to be a history teacher if you take history. OK, it relates to so many different careers. So it relates to careers in law, politics, the public sector. You can have a career in business, marketing, economics, teaching, insurance, archaeology. OK, because it provides you with such an array of skills such as analysis, research, write, research, essay writing, communication, problem solving, arguing. And it also relates to many different subjects. So it pairs quite well with these subjects if you would like to choose these for A level. So English literature, languages, media, law, politics, philosophy, psychology, economics, sociology. OK, and on the picture on the board as well, there's also a few examples of degree courses that it links well with. 
So if you're thinking about going to university, here's some examples of how history can help you get onto these courses. There are many careers where history is useful because history provides you with a set of transferable skills that are applicable to a wide range of careers. It helps you understand the process of change and continuity, understand the complexity of people's lives, to ask perceptive questions, think critically, weigh evidence, sift arguments, develop perspective and judgment, but also it helps to understand the diversities of societies and relationships between different groups. And also it can help you to understand your own identity and the challenges of your time. Okay, and careers that are interested in these skills are careers such as journalism, law, politics, business, criminology, content creators for businesses like YouTube, editing, a writer, sociology, and even in Parliament.